In our last session, we took a look at what brushes are. In this session, we're going to take a look at the artistic media properties bar and dock. We want to be aware of how these work and how we use them when we're working with our brushes. The first thing we're going to take a look at is the properties bar. Come up here to the toolbar and I go down four icons, little arrow here in the right hand bottom corner, left click on that hold down and I'll get a rollout or a context menu here and I can go to artistic media and you'll notice that when I do that my properties bar up here will change and this is my artistic media properties bar. I'll left click here and bring this over. Properties bar artistic media brush. Now there's a couple of different brushes here. We're going to focus just on the brush. There's a sprayer, there's a calligraphic pen, there's pressure, and there's also presets. But we're going to be working with just brush in this series. On this properties bar, I have the ability to control the freehand smoothing that's associated with my brush. And we'll take a look at what that is. Now, if I'm drawing with a mouse or the Bezier tool, that's really not going to be that important. But if I take, let's say I go and I'll get, I'll just go ahead and get a brush here. I'll take one of my... Um, We've been working with the 400 brush pack throughout the entire series here, but I'll grab, let's say, something like, uh, we'll go with ink effects here and select OK. And I'll just come down here and grab one of these ink brushes and left click and start to draw with this. Now you can see that my smoothing is set at 100% and I just drew that line. What I want to do is I'm going to draw a squiggly line and you'll see how that smoothing works. First, I'm going to go ahead and change this smoothing down to zero. And I'll just start creating a squiggly line here. And you can see how that drew out. If we go to view wireframe, we might be able to see the nodes, lines and nodes. View wireframe, and really we're not going to be able to make that out. They're there, but you can see how everything stayed. I'll click on this, and you can see the lines and the nodes. These little blue spots here are nodes, and you can see that this particular line, the way it was scribbled out, it created a lot of nodes. It wasn't smoothed out. I'm going to go ahead and zoom out, go back to View and Enhanced. I'll zoom out and I'll create another squiggly line this time, but this time I'll change my smoothing to 100. And basically I'll get smoother lines and we'll just kind of follow the same path here. And you can see that my line just isn't quite as jaggy. It's much smoother. You don't have the, ch -ch -ch, the corners that you have here. My line's much more smoothed out. And if we go back to View Wireframe, you'll be able to see that there's less nodes also. The best way to take a look at these or compare these two would be actually to break them apart, and that's what I'll do. I'll go to View and Enhanced, and we'll go here, we'll just right click. We want to be in the brush part. If you're on the line part or the segment part, where you're actually your nodes and lines are for the brush, if you're on that when you click, you'll be able to break apart, but if you're not, you won't. You can see I'm not able to break apart here, but if I come over here, perhaps over this node, click on that, and we'll go ahead and zoom in here. You'll notice that what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this brush apart. If I'm off to one side, break apart our artistic media group. There we go. Select OK. Now, if I delete what was my actual brush here, you can see here's the line that was created when I created that stroke. And we'll do the same thing here. Break apart artistic media group. And what you want to do is you want to click here off the side. If you click in the middle, you don't get that. But if you come right down here, what you know is the brush object part, and you right click, you will get that. It's a little tricky when you're dealing with these because if I come over here and click in the middle, I don't have the break part. But if I come here off the edge where I know is the object that's my brush and click, I get break apart artistic media group. But we'll go ahead and break that apart. And you can see the difference between the two lines here. Here's the line that was drawn with smoothing set at 100%. Here's the line that was drawn with smoothing set at zero. And that's why we want to be aware of that smoothing setting. Now I like to have it pretty high up in the you know, 85 to 100 percent, but if you want to create something really jaggy or you want your line to go exactly what you're doing with it, then you'd set that back and tone back on that and you'd get less smoothing. you notice also that you get less nodes here. Typically the result is, is that your brushes aren't quite as destroyed. If I go Control z here and Control z here and we'll Control z back, you can see the difference between the two brush strokes and how this one's not quite as destroyed, but this one wherever there's a corner in the line, it's kind of destroyed and broken up and you don't want that. So that is your smoothing. The next thing we want to take a look at here is our brush width. So I'll go back to my artistic media tool and I'll zoom out and I'll create another brush stroke here. 
And here I've got my brush stroke width, and I can left click as long as I've got this selected. If I don't have the brush selected, then I won't be able to change that. But as long as I've got the brush selected, I can change that. And you can see my stroke just resized there. And if I go too big with that, that'll kind of destroy that. Now over here I've got my brows, where I can go to my different folders. I can go to my barbed wire brushes here, and that'll open those up in the brush browser here, and then I can change this to a barbed wire, and then come back over here and just left click, hold down and slide, and bring that down size, or I can go 0 0.5 and enter a numeric value, and hit enter and change the size of my brush. Now, if I'm creating brushes, and let's say I've got these brushes here, and I want to create my own custom brush with these brushes that I've created, I can very easily select all of these brushes here, go back to my brush tool, click on save, and I could save this as a brush in, say, my strokes here. I could call this new barbed wire, my strokes, and I could call this new barbed wire. go ahead and save that and then I can save that as another brush and that new barbed wire would then be available for me to draw with and I could go open that now I think this is the default now is actually that new barbed wire I think it goes to the default when it um, does that we'll take a look here and see and actually that's a different brush that's not actually no that is that brush that's a brush I just created by default now I have that brush so I can save that and if I wanted to browse to where I'd save that, I could go and open that up. Now there's another tool outside the properties bar here that has a lot of the same functions as the property bar. Not all of them, but that's your artistic media docker. And you get to that through window and dockers. Now what this will do is it will present a history of the recently used brushes. Some of those aren't available here in my browser here in the properties bar, but they are available over here. And I can also browse through here I can delete brushes. If I don't want to use this brush anymore, I could select it and delete it. Same thing up in here. I could select a brush and delete that if I wanted to. Now, working with the docker, I can also come over here and I can select what I want to show. Presets, object sprayer. I can go to a browser also. And I can also select brushes. If I have a line segment, let's create a Bezier line segment here. and We'll take a look at some of the things we can do here. If I want to create a barbed wire, a straight barbed wire brush, I can come over here to the docker and I can just click on that and it'll apply it. As you can see there, I can also left click, hold down, drag a brush into the Corel Draw workspace, release that and it'll apply that brush. Now I missed the line that time. I want to come over here, make sure I'm on the line, release and now that brush has been applied. But you notice I don't have the size over here. Also, I can come down here to the bottom and click apply and apply that and then there's a auto apply button here but I don't like to turn that on because anytime I create a line it'll auto apply it and I don't really like to have that much control or I don't like the way that functions if you notice that if I have this auto apply locked on and I start to create lines I believe what that does is applies them automatically yeah, it locks that brush to the apply. I want to unlock that, but it locks the brush that you selected to that apply function. And of course, there's a save here also. So that's the properties bar in the docker. You'll see me working with these a lot throughout the training series, but I wanted to take a minute to get familiar with these important tools and working with our brushes. And you want to go ahead and experiment with those. And once again, that docker is available under window, dockers, and right down here, artistic media. And if you open that and you can't see that, that means it's collapsed. It'll be over here on the side. Just look for the artistic media with the pen icon. You can open that and start to work with it.